Welcome back again, everybody. Um, we're going to get going today on our day, third day of notes here. So today we're going to be talking about exponents and square roots. So we'll just get right into it. An expression like 4 to the 6th here, as we see, is called a power. So this whole number that we're talking about here, we're calling a power. It is a number in power form. So our exponent of 6, so we're going to call this 6 up here, the exponent represents the number of times that we take our base so this other number we call the base how many times we take the number base of 4 and use it as a factor or how many times we multiply it together because factors are just uh, numbers that we multiply together to get new numbers so in this case 4 to the 6 is telling us we have 6 factors of 4. So we got a couple examples here. So we have a bunch of different forms that we can see numbers in. So this first one, 10 to the first power. I'm just reading it from the word form to see what the exponential form means. That means we're just taking one group of 10 and we can't multiply it with anything because we only have one factor of it. So it's just going to be 10. Anything to the first power any number that I take to the first power is just going to be equal to itself. So next, 4 squared, or 4 to the second power. So there's two ways we can say this, 4 to the second power, or 4 squared, is just telling us that we are taking our base of 4 and multiplying it together by itself. We are multiplying two things of 4, and when we do that we get 16. So using our other examples, we have here, it tells us 5 to the third power, or 5 cubed. So that means we're going to take our base of 5, and our exponent, since we're taking it to the third power, is going to be 3. And then to get my standard form, all I have to do is multiply that out. So 5 times 5 will give me 25, and then 25 times this final 5 is going to be 125. And finally, uh, our exponential form is telling us we have a base of 2, so we're taking 2 to the 5th power because we are multiplying 2 together 5 times. So we're taking 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That is 4 of them, so one more. And if we multiply this out, we're just going 2 times 2 is 4, times this next 2 is 8, times this next 2 is 16, and finally times this last 2 is going to give us 32 for that. Alright, so when we're squaring something, we're just dealing with the exponent of 2. So square roots are going to be the opposite of squaring something or taking something to the second power. Just like subtraction is the opposite of addition, division is the opposite of multiplication, square roots is going to be the opposite of squaring. So here it's telling us that the square root of 9 is going to be 3 because 3 squared is going to be 3 times 3, and that is equal to 9. So all it's asking us here is what number times itself will give us 9. And we know that 3 times itself will give us 9, because 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 is our answer here. All right, and finally, a perfect square is a number formed by squaring a whole number. So our example from 9 above is a perfect square because we took a whole number, 3, and squared it to get 9. So 9 would be a perfect square. And if we draw out a little example here, we can do split this into 3. So we're doing our 3 up here times our 3 over here, and we get a square that is 9 units big in area. Alright, so we're just going to try a couple examples here. So, 
3 squared we know from our example, and to the right there is 9. <clears throat> now for number 2, I'm taking my base of 4 and multiplying it together 3 times. So this is going to be 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is going to give us 16. And then 16 times that last 4 is going to give us 64 altogether there. Alrighty. Next we have 3 to the 4th power, so we're taking our base of 3 and multiplying it together 4 times. So 3 times 3 is going to give us 9. 9 times 3 will be 27. And then 27 times that last 3 is going to give us 81. Alright, so for number 4 here, it's asking us to take the square root of 81. So it's asking us, what number can I multiply by itself to get to 81? Well, if we think of um, 9 times 9, well, that's going to give us 81, right? I took 9, and I multiplied it times itself to get 81. So the square root of 81 is 9. And same thing for number 5. It's asking us, what number can we multiply by itself to get 121 out of it? Well, if we think of 10... Well, 10 times 10 is only going to give us 100. That's a little bit too small, right? We're trying to get to 121. So let's try the number above it. We'll get 11. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Bring down a 0. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. Add those together, and sure enough, we get our 121. So the square root of 121 is 11. And we just got to keep counting these up as we go. Um, so these are things we're going to have to memorize. Um, so we'll get a big old table of perfect squares from 0 all the way up to 20. And we'll just give this one to you right now. So the square root of 225, what number can I multiply by itself to get 225? Well, that's just going to be 15 since 15 times 15 is 225. All right, so it's asking us, is 198 a perfect square? And how can we find out? So I'm just gonna get this old stuff out of the way here. And it is actually not going to be. So we'll say no. And how can we find out? Well, we took 15 squared, and that's going to be 225. So let's back one up to try to get to a little bit smaller number. So if we take a look at 14 squared, or 14 times 14, and just multiply that out real quick. Get a 6, a 9, and a 1. And this is why not, because we tried 14, and we got something a little bit smaller than 198 that we were looking at. And then we went one above it, and we got something that is bigger than 198. So 198 cannot be a perfect square, because it lies in between 196 and 225. All right, so that is it for today for our notes. So. This question down here, this qu first question will be the question number one that you'll take care of on your assignment, and you'll find the rest of your assignment in the next page on your Canvas profile. All right, thanks for tuning in. And